Hi, today I want to talk to you about a problem that I believe is very important that we address. The problem is senior citizens that require oxygen replacement therapy suffer from a limited sense of independence and limited mobility. Now, according to Dr. Marvel, uh, who authored the book Family Systems and Health, there's a significant amount of evidence supporting the fact that senior citizens who cannot move around experience many more psychological problems, feel like they're helpless, and are far less likely to be able to combat the various diseases associated with aging. Now, today I'm going to focus on specifically COPDs. COPDs are chronic obstructive pulmonary disorders. Now, a common COPD is emphysema. Now, I'm affected personally by this. My grandmother has emphysema, and I've, I've seen her struggle with oxygen replacement therapy. Quite simply, she's required to carry around her own extra oxygen supply. So the oxygen in the atmosphere is not enough for her to be able to feel like she's getting enough oxygen into her lungs. And this is simply because a person with emphysema has dysfunctional um, alveoli. Alveoli are the functional units of the lung. They're small pockets that allow for oxygen transfer from the air that you inhale into um, your circulatory system, your, your blood. So just to give you a little demo, a person with a healthy lung will inhale and their alveoli will expand like this. And they will get a maximum surface area which maximizes oxygen transfer from the air into the blood. Now a person with emphysema will experience this. When they attempt to breathe, you can see it's like a balloon with a hole in it. The area of the balloon never actually reaches its maximum surface area. Therefore, when a regular person is breathing the, the atmospheric air, they feel like, wow, there's plenty of oxygen here for me to access. But a person with emphysema cannot access that air because they can't increase the surface area inside their lungs to allow that oxygen transfer to occur. Now, that being said, the number one treatment for this is just, let's just add more oxygen. Let's provide an oxygen source that is pure oxygen for that person so that they may feel like they have enough oxygen. However, that extra oxygen source leads to immobility because those oxygen tanks are heavy. Now today, I want to talk to you about ReZero. Again, my name is Joseph Crane. I'm a sophomore at the Pennsylvania State University studying mechanical engineering. And I believe that ReZero can give emphysema patients specifically an added mobility factor in their life, increasing their quality of life and their ability to conduct daily tasks. So, first of all, I want you to imagine something. I'm going to say a word, picture whatever comes into your mind after I say the word. The word is robot. So, whatever comes to your mind, keep it in your mind. Now, my question for you is now, was that image any of these images? Now, most people, with, with the comings of Pixar and iRobot and, and other sci-fi movies, they're going to have some kind of Hollywood spin on how they think and feel about robots. Now, maybe if you have a, uh, you know, a direct connection with robots in your professional career, you, you may think of a robot as a super uh, human uh, manufacturing machine, as seen in, in, in this picture on the bottom left, which is in a uh, Ford company manufacturing plant. So today I'm going to try to kind of mold your intuition about how robots can interact with people and how they can actually solve our problems beyond being manufacturing beasts, if you will. 
So I believe that ReZero can solve the problem of the immobility of COPD patients for three reasons. The first reason being ReZero has the ability to move dynamically. The second reason being ReZero has a design that allows it to be inherently versatile, meaning that we can change the frame of the robot without actually adversely affecting the robot's performance. And thirdly is the fact that ReZero has the ability to function in multiple modes or settings. More to come on that later. First, let's talk about how ReZero moves dynamically. ReZero moves by simultaneously uh, rotating three wheels. It does this with three motors and it constantly adjusts its pitch angle with the ground. So ReZero has a sensor. It senses its angle with the ground and then adjusts the motor so that it doesn't tip over. This is actually very similar to how a human walks. If you think about it, you, when you walk and you take a step, you don't just lift your foot and stay balanced and then step forward and then adjust your center of mass and do the same thing in a very methodical way. You just step forward and your body kind of carries you there. You are falling forward and your leg catches you and then you take another step and you fall forward and your leg catches you. The same thing when you're walking up steps. You're actually falling and then you are caught. This is the same thing going on here. ReZero is falling and then it adjusts itself and it doesn't fall. So this allows it to be stable. Its instability is actually leads to its stability. Just like if you were to get pushed, you would adjust. Same thing, ReZero has the ability to be pushed and readjust itself using those sensors that, al that allow it to not fall over. Moving towards the design versatility, ReZero has already been modeled several ways. It's been pitched by the, auto the, by the um, very impressive scientists working in the Autonomous Systems Lab at ETH Zurich. They've, they've marketed this robot as maybe a, a pod that would walk around a park with a, with a tablet attached to it and you could interact with it and ask it questions. They've also, um, they've also marketed it as, a, as something that you could ride, maybe put a seat on it and um, sit on it and move about the mall with it um, as sort of an alternate mode of transportation. However, the, the scientists at ETH Zurich acknowledge that the higher the center of gravity of the robot, actually the better the robot performs, meaning that it's able to reach a higher uh, maximum velocity, a faster acceleration, and is actually more stable at a higher center of gravity. So what I'm trying to say is the more we add on to it, obviously up until a point, but the more height that we give it, the better the robot will perform. Now I'm going to show a quick video and illustrating the multifunctionality of the robot. In the next mode, we can get Rizio to follow a person. He's now keeping a constant distance to Thomas. This works with a laser sensor that's mounted on top of Rizio. With the same method, we can also get him to circulate person. We call this the orbiting mode. Okay, so we just saw two modes there, the follow the leader mode and the orbiting mode. The other two modes are the passive mode, where I would be able to just pull ReZero and it would move as I push or pull it. So I could pass him to you and you could pass him back to me and ReZero would not resist the force that you apply to it. The final mode is the retention mode where it tries to hold its position. So if I push it, it will slide a few feet and then come back to its original position. You can see how 
these modes are really what makes the the robot a, an applicable solution to the problem of towing an oxygen tank. Ultimately, I believe that if we mounted an oxygen tank on top of ReZero, we would provide a senior citizen with a disease like emphysema with a means to move that oxygen tank without straining the person's breathing more than it already is. So if that person is just sitting, ReZero could be sitting and retaining its position next to you on the couch. And if your nephew or grandson or dog runs into ReZero, it won't fall over and, and, and break or break something else in your house. It'll just slide a few feet, maybe a couple of inches, and slide right back. Same thing as if you're taking a walk outside or in the garden moving around. ReZero could follow, follow you around, keeping a constant distance from you. And if you had to make a turn or ReZero had to constantly be moving around you in a crowd to, to maneuver, you could put on the orbiting mode. So these four modes really make ReZero versatile and unique in its solution application. So let's recap. The problem is senior citizens with chronic obstructive pulmonary disorders need more oxygen than the atmosphere can provide. The solution to that problem? An oxygen tank. Let's inject pure oxygen into their lungs at a steady controlled pace. The problem with those oxygen tanks? They're heavy. They're not easily moved, especially by an older person. So we add ReZero into the equation. ReZero acts as a taxi service for your oxygen tank and allows you to move. And that's going to result in the much higher quality of life for a person who requires that oxygen replacement therapy to be able to breathe comfortably. Thank you for your time.